everything that left you that should not have left by the power of prophecy in the name of Jesus I call it back our esteemed viewers the message you are about to listen to is designed to revive your spiritual mind and to restore hope and intimacy with the Holy Spirit stay tuned and have a blessed moment with us the miracle of open eyes is a real miracle the miracle of open eyes is a real miracle every time Jesus saw blind people he did not leave them in that condition it was a message many believers I submit to you are very blind spiritually and are not interested in learning the ways of God but they are interested in the results that follow his ways you see the way it works is you have to know the ways of God to experience his glory if you cannot experience if you don't know his ways you cannot know his glory. Exodus 33, the first request that Moses made was in verse 15. He says, Lord, show me your way. Show me your way. Show me your way. Did I get that right? Exodus, uh, show me your way. And then you back up to verse 18. That would be Exodus what now? And he says, show me your glory. So it was his way first. And then his glory. Show me your way. And then show me your glory. Thank you. Verse 13 now. It says, show me thy way. Is that true? So he first asks of his way. Now go to verse 18. Five verses later. And he now pleaded and said, show me your glory. So if you do not know his ways, you cannot know his glory. Many believers desire the glory of God, but they do not want to learn the ways of God. I wrote down here, in this kingdom, dominion in any area is based on sufficient knowledge, not just knowledge. Let's read it together if you can see it projected. Can we read together? One to read. If any man think that he knoweth anything he says he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know i will always give this example please look at me everybody for a student in school whose scores 10 percent over 100 a student who scores 20 percent a student who scores 30 percent and a student who scores 35 percent who was the highest who passed in a great system of A to F? Are you seeing that now? If you are to give an award based on who was the highest, the one who got 35 will come to receive the award as the highest. But if you are to qualify them based on who scored F or D or E or C, all of them failed. That means the one who scored zero, the one who didn't write the exam, and the one who passed more will all stand in the same category. It is dangerous to know little. Because you will receive the same recompense with the person who is not even serious. This is the challenge with many believers. Something small about finances. Something small about prayer. Something small about the Holy Ghost. Something small about speed. Something small about victory. And you find out that our results become the same as the person who is absolutely not interested in the things of God. And we say, Lord, this is unfair, but at least I go to church. Do not forget my, anal my analogy. 35 over 100, based on the great system, is the same. Hmm. Could that be why many, many believers don't seem to rise? To the point where people can look at you and say, at least me, I'm sure I'm not serious with God. But you who looks like you are serious, why are our results the same? In the name of Jesus, the kind of light that fires from heaven through his word to you, it will produce a clear difference between you and anyone who is not serious with God. Please sit down. 
sufficient knowledge sufficient not enough the person who gets a may not get hundred but he did not fail too far to be mocked are we together everybody say light let me challenge you therefore in the name of jesus who is the son of the living god this is not the season for empty noise this is the season to go back and camp with the truth some of you after this conference go and get pastor's materials don't say i was there when he taught it has the result justified your being there that day camp with it lord this finance thing i am tired you are lifting my prophet you are honoring him giving him a voice i can't be here sitting saying amen every sunday and this thing is not changing and you go and camp with it. The Bible says, through desire, Proverbs 18, 1, a man has been separated. You see, most, you don't hear these kinds of testimonies again, where people would tell you, I took a three days retreat in prayer and fasting, locking myself with the word. Father, let light come from heaven. There has to be a way. Why is this thing not moving? Can I tell you, the only person who receives an answer is the one who can ask a question. An answer is a harvest. The seed is a question. If you are too proud to ask and to inquire, you are also too proud to receive. Father, why is this not working? That to take care of two children, I'm a Christian, I love God, and it looks like I'm dying. Whereas there is someone who, as at the time I came to Abuja, I was the one helping this person. It's not unhealthy comparison, but I'm provoking myself unto godliness. There has to be a way. The Bible says in Jeremiah, has God helped somebody tonight? It says, Thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the good parts. Wherein is the good way and walk therein and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk. There are many, many people who are absolutely bankrupt of results and only remain as commentators in life. I have never seen, I may be wrong, but I've never seen fat wings. They are the ones who lift the profit. And when they are converting it to cash, I'm not aware that they call anybody anywhere and say, because you were in the stadium, come and share. Stop being a fan and challenge yourself and this fan mentality that I, I'm just around good things but I never partake of it. I, I'm always, I was there when he testified. I was there when they prophesied. I was there. I saw the person fall down. I saw the person cry. I was there 10 years ago. I still remember a fan mentality. You must challenge yourself. Lord, if it will happen, I will be part of it. In the name of Jesus Christ, someone shout light. Please, in one minute, I'd like you to lay your hands on your head and declare, open up, open up for light. I speak to my destiny. Uh, I've encompassed this mountain long enough. Open up. Someone, you are prophesying in the name of Jesus. I am a man of God, but I am tired of this level of ministry. Lord, stretch me to a higher level by the power of light. Bring exactitude to my results, exactitude and mastery to my spiritual experience. In the name of Jesus, please sit down. So the first non-negotiable requirement, if your life must be extraordinary and if you must host and manifest superior dimensions of the glory of God, is light access to knowledge you must know what is there this kingdom is knowledge dependent number two now pay attention to this one the second key is the knowledge of the conditions required to activate the promises of god 
the knowledge of the conditions required to activate the promises of God. It is one thing to know what God has said. And respectfully speaking, you can die there with sufficient knowledge that God said it. Knowing that God said it does not make it happen. You must know what conditions have been connected to that promise. I submit to you in the name of Jesus Christ that this is where many, many, many believers, including church people, have missed it. We are full of the knowledge of what God has said. But most people do not contend to move further to know the conditions that are connected. Deuteronomy chapter 28, please, from verse 1 and 2. Deuteronomy 28 from verse 1 and 2. It shall come to pass, the Bible says, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To do what? To observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day. It says that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth. Verse 2. And all these blessings... And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee. If, 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 knowing the blessings will not make them happen. Reciting them may not make them happen. Listen, most believers know what God has said. But they do not know what it takes. The demands, the conditions connected to it. I know it is my destiny in Christ to rise, but what condition was connected to that? I know it is in my destiny to prosper, but what condition is connected to that? Hallelujah. Isaiah chapter 1 from verse 19 and 20. Isaiah chapter 1, 19 and 20. It says, if ye be willing and obedient ye shall eat the good of the land verse 20 but if ye refuse and rebel ye shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the lord hath spoken it apostle there is good in that land just like pastor was sharing he has revealed to you i was so blessed in fact i think we should look at that scripture again deuteronomy chapter 8 from verse 7 to 9. Deuteronomy chapter 8, 7 to 9. For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land. Let your amen not just mean let it be so. Let your amen also mean I amen to obtain grace to find out what it takes. A land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills. Reading to verse 9. A land of wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates and of oil and of honey. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. So there is such a realm as that. A land where thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron and whose hills thou mayest dig as brass. The average believer will say, Amen. And leave this statement as a parable and a painful, a painful memory verse in your life. But somebody will say, Lord, I have found what you have said. What is my own part? What do I need to do? Listen carefully. For some of you here, this is the reason why 2019 has become the same thing as 2020. Regardless of the prophecy. 2020, the same thing as 2021. And if you don't hear this, I pray not. That 2022 becomes just like last year. The demands. The demands. What does it take? What does it take, oh God, to be the head and not the tail? What does it take, oh God, to become a voice? What does it take, oh God, to command the attention of heaven? What does it take to carry genuine spiritual power? What does it take to attract favor to my domain perpetually? 
Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the ways of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient path. Will you lead us along eternal highway? We want to follow the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. The knowledge of the conditions required. Listen, every time you find a promise in scripture, draw two lines. Write that promise on one side. Then begin the part two of your learning. What is the condition, O oh God? Don't just say, I am the head and not the tail. If it is your confession to build up, fine. But if you mean just by speaking it, it will automatically happen. I hate to be the bearer of bad news. But you may sit there waiting and waiting and waiting even forever. Everybody say conditions. Every time you read the Bible, you will find out, ladies and gentlemen, that scripture is full of people who triumph because they not only saw the possibilities, but they stayed until they also received the conditions. I'll give you an example. The Bible talks about Jericho, popular scripture. How that it was shot, nothing would go in, nothing would come out. How in the world would you defeat such a city that five chariots could stand on the fence? And Joshua had to wait. To know what is our own part. Victory is certain. God has spoken. Victory is not in our efforts. Victory is in his voice. So because he has spoken, we know that victory is there. But now, walking in the reality of that victory, they had to wait until he came. And he said, here is the instruction that is connected. Your own part is go around once. They would have said, why do we need to go around once? Let's just go around six times in one day. Once. And on the sixth day, he said, don't mind what you see. Just keep moving. And at the seventh time, he said, shout. I thought you would say fight. He said, shout. Is it in your Bible? The Bible says, as they shouted, that wall crumbled. It didn't fall. It sank. Because if the wall falls, it will still become another fence. It sank. When Peter saw Jesus walking on water, he wanted the same results. And Jesus said, the result is obtainable. If it be thou, bid me come. The instruction, come. Not swim. Come. Peter would have said, I'm a fisherman. I will swim when I come to you. <clears throat> come. Listen. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. Go and write down every area you need to see the glory of God in your life. And then contend for grace. Contend for grace. I think it's Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. Please give it to us. Leviticus chapter 9 and verse 6. And Moses said, This is the thing which the Lord commanded that ye should do. He says, And the glory of the Lord shall appear. There is always what you will do. This is the thing that the Lord commanded that you should do. Are we together? Condition number three. And we'll wrap it up for tonight. Are you ready for number three? The third key or requirement if you want to see notable, extraordinary manifestations of the grace of God, you want to command supernatural possibilities, is that you must be ready to take actions of obedience. Actions of obedience. Not actions. Actions of obedience. In one word, we call it faith. Faith in one word is action. Actions of obedience. 
Faith is more than believing. Faith is more than confessing. Faith is more than wishing. Faith is more than speaking positively until there is action in the direction of obedience. You are not walking by faith. Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. Mary again with the angel. When he came to Mary, Luke chapter 1 and verse 45. It says, Blessed is she that believed. Is that in your Bible? It says, For there shall be a performance. Say performance. Of those things that were told her. Say told her. There is a difference between what was told, even though it's the Lord who said it, and a performance of it. God said it to me. We don't doubt it. But it takes another dynamics to have its performance. 